I will say that during this match, there was the number one thing that drove me crazy about this show. And that was, as this match is going on, they start running down the card for this show. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, on Wednesday, we did know that they were going to do Tony Storm and Anna Jay. And also, they had advertised this match. The Bang Bang Gang versus Top Flight and Action Andretti. So, you know, I'm watching this match, and they start they start announcing things for the show. And uh, one of them is the return of Roosh. This guy's been gone I don't even know how long. He's back. Totally at random. Whatever, he's back. The return of Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Bro. Should have been a big deal. Do you know how long Phoenix has been gone? Uh, yes, and when the, what, what he was the last we saw of him? He's just back. Unadvertised. Like He's just back. They like announced him four hours before the show. Hey, Phoenix is going to be on the show tonight. Mm-hmm. And then the return or the, the, the debut of the grizzled young vets. Yeah. Just like all of this stuff. And I'm not even not to mention it was impromptu. But, you know, they announced that we're going to have Swerve defending the AEW World Heavyweight title on Collision. All four of those things were like, if you watched Dynamite and then went out to spend the weekend, you had no earthly idea these things were happening. Like, some of it was announced a couple hours earlier on Twitter and everything. But, I mean, come on. How in God's name does... It's like if Rhea Ripley just one day, you know, you turn on Raw and they go, oh, Rhea's back tonight. What? That's I could have. What? The comparison, actually. Yes. And actually, the comparison is... is uh, and Actually, they actually gave you some uh, uh, forward... Uh, on, on SmackDown a couple of weeks ago, they said, Sheamus is back on Raw. I think they said it on SmackDown. But uh, Sheamus just came back and had a match. And I was very critical of it. Because it was like, that guy's been gone since September. And, like, that's his big return? He just showed up on Raw and had a match. Like, nothing. Like, he was just another guy. So you should never treat big stars like just another guy. And that's totally what this was. Phoenix, just another guy. Rush, Roosh, just another guy. They're just another guy. And even the world title match, just another world title match, made it. The, we announced it the afternoon of the show, which, by the way, was, like, the afternoon of the show, they needed something. And so they set it up. I think maybe a little bit better f- planning would be in... Uh, their best interests it's kind of feast or famine when they announce things because sometimes i'm watching the show and they're announcing things on the show that night they're also announcing things on for rampage and they're also announcing things for dynamite so by the time everything's done i have no idea what's where yeah they plug zero matches or they plug 90 matches and it's right hard to keep track another recap the fdr young bucks ladder match they know fdr is on the mend not here tonight but coming back very soon a House of Black video package, wherein they note that in addition to uh, Malachi Black pinning Adam Copeland at the, pay, uh, the uh, pay-per-view, Brody King now has two wins over the TNT champion. So together, they are accepting the Cope Open Challenge for May 1st in Winnipeg, which is next week's Dynamite. But they will not say which one of them it will be. I'll presume that it will be Buddy, and Adam will beat him. They basically announced Buddy Matthews, but then the announcer tried to say, well, you know, it could be any of them. Well, yeah, yeah. Pretty sure it's going to be Buddy. It'll be Buddy, and then uh, Brody will get his match, and then Malachi at the pay-per-view, I assume. Yes, Ray Phoenix versus the Beast Mortos. <laughs> yes. My new favorite name. This is the former Black Taurus yes. who could not use that name, and they had to come up with something. Boy, did they. And people were like, maybe the Black Bull, maybe Taurus Negro or something. No, we got the Beast. Beast Mortos. I am so grateful. <laughs> that is a fucking great The name. Beast Mortos. Never Beast Mortos, or even just Mortos. Always, all three words, The Beast Mortos. And I gotta say, Ray Phoenix has been gone since uh, God only knows how long. Well, they told you. He was, the last time we saw him was the holy day of October 10th. October 10th. He's been gone since October 10th. But the match where he, last time we saw him, he lost the international title to Orange Cassidy. Yes, yes. yes. And as far as it goes, he's not as big a, uh, a star as Rhea Ripley. Well, of course he's not. But you know what? He should be a way fucking bigger star than he is. And one of the reasons mm-hmm. he's not is this. Yeah. So anyway, uh, even though he's been gone since October, you would never have known. This guy was fucking great. Oh, my God, this great. match. And Fantastic. Beast Mortos. Excuse me. The Beast Mortos. The Beast Mortos. This guy likes his tornillos. He does. He can pull a tornado out of his ass, in fact, and uh, may have. 
and they did all of these great spots, and they did a spot where Phoenix was going to do a double springboard torneo off the top rope to the floor onto the beast Mortos. And uh, and he hit it, Mortos took a bump. But what is what is important about this is I think that's not what was supposed to happen mm. because the way that he landed on the beast Mortos, I think that what Phoenix tried to do was a double springboard torneo off the post to the floor into a tornado DDT because he landed hooking the guy's head and he started to go back for the DDT. But Mortos fell the other way, he just took a bump. So the, the move didn't happen. But uh, that that move would have been completely nuts. And I'll bet they do it next time. But uh, this was an awesome, oh. awesome match. Mm-hmm. They started in there. And I I said they're actually doing here in a singles version what I've wanted them to do with the Lucha Brothers in a tag team version for literally the entire time they've been around, which is go to Mexico, bring up any team, or in this case any singles wrestler, who can look awesome and have a great match that puts you over in the end. And that's what they did. It was great. But they came out here then, and for the first half of this, was it was not a classic Lucha Libre match. It was not a modern AEW-style match. It was... They did about two minutes of cool shit, and then the Beast Mortos... Killed him. Cut him off, and it grounded him. And it was a dominant heel heat segment, the likes of which probably you've not seen in AEW all year. He grounded this guy, he put him in a bunch of submissions, he stomped him, and it was never boring. It was awesome the entire time. It went on and on for several minutes. This had to be the longest time any any uh, guy has had the heat in AEW all year. He's crushing him, and it's great, and the crowd wants Phoenix to, to come back more and more. It was awesome. And then finally, after the commercial break, Ray is making his comeback. Ray Phoenix is making his comeback. And there is a spot here where he sort of is like, does a pop-up, but puts his plants his feet on the beast Mortos' shoulders and boots him in the face. And Tony screams, he walked on his head! <laughs> Very he actually that one. didn't, but uh, he did stand on his shoulders and kick his head. That's what happened, yes, yes. So, Ray, uh, I keep calling him Ray. Phoenix is that... Well, his name is Ray Phoenix. I guess his first so name is Ray. You may as well call him Ray. Sure. Uh, he does, does that insane torneo dive, whatever the hell they were trying. It, whatever they did, worked. Uh, we go back in the ring. It's back and forth for several minutes. And I was not... This is not a complaint. But I was very surprised at how much time they had and how long it was going. And then Phoenix won with a cradle out of nowhere. Tremendous pro wrestling. And I'm trying to think, okay, what happens next? And that can be dangerous in AEW because sometimes the answer is just nothing. But the match was so good and the finish was so iffy. I mean, Phoenix pinned him, but it was with a cradle out of nowhere and he ran for his life afterwards. You could easily do a rematch. That would be awesome. You could also use that rematch to build because they pointed out he's a former international champion. And they pushed that and pushed that and pushed that the entire way. And uh, perhaps this rematch he does with... The Beast Mortos will lead to him being the next challenger for the international title after Double or Nothing against, I presume, Will Ospreay. Yes, please. That sounds great. Mm-hmm. So I was very excited for the future when this thing was done. I absolutely love this match. Um, there was, I, I don't know, when I, when I tell you that Ray Phoenix lands on his head, he literally lands on his head, but he stands there like an exclamation point for moments upon end. It's the craziest thing. Um, I did have one nitpick, and it was actually my son's nitpick. After Ray did a series of moves and then hit a beautiful frog splash, TBM kicked out the Beast Mortos. And then there was a roll-up, and Cameron looked at me, and he goes, that was the finish? Yes. Why wasn't it the frog splash? And... Listen, his dad was barely a wrestler, and Cameron's not a wrestler, and he picked up on that. So, just saying. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.